Hello, my fellow thespians. I have heard that a lot of people are spending time at home looking at screens. So, since so many people were not asking, I thought it was my duty to give a little unrequested and presumptuous acting lesson. We're going to start off with rule number one. The game is called Make Believe. The clue is in the title. Make Believe, not Make Fake. You watch little girls having a <clears throat> tea party. They believe. They're having a tea party. That's why they're fascinating to watch. That's why you see a little kid and people say, oh, he was such a good actor. Yeah, he's playing make believe. He's not playing make fake. Okay, number two. We're going to go with James Cagney's rules of acting. If you're too young to know who he is, Google him. Now, these rules of acting were told to me through the television by the person James Cagney told them to, who was Jack Lemmon. Too young to know who he is? Google him. Know your lines. Plant your feet. Look the other actor in the eye, say your line, and mean it. Now, this may sound simplistic or impossible. Oh, I'm walking. I can't plant my feet there. Yes, rules are made to be broken. And even though it may seem simplistic, we'll go through it a little bit. Know your lines. In Ireland, they say, know it like the... I don't even know Irish prayers. Know it like the Our Father. But anyway, you have to know it. The reason you have to know it is because you have to know your lines good enough to listen. You have to be listening to your partner so that you can react. So that you can believe what they just said to you. If you're thinking about what's my next line and you're not listening to them, we're not going to get an honest reaction. So, know your lines. Plant your feet. You can't always plant your feet. Yes, I know. But most of the time, you don't want to be stumbling around and uh, dispersing the energy of the line that you're about to deliver. <clears throat> know your lines. Plant your feet. Look the other actor in the eye. Now, maybe you can't always do this, but I honestly think sometimes in theater, and especially amateur theater, people look at the audience too much. You can look at the other person. People will know what's going on. It will look more realistic. Know your lines. Plant your feet. Look the other actor in the eye. Say your line and mean it. Now, how do you mean it? Well, some people spend thousands of dollars and years and years trying to learn how to act. How you mean it is by following the other rules. That way, when they speak, you have been listening to them and you can give an honest reaction because you were honestly listening. We're going to wind it up with Shakespeare. <clears throat> this is called Hamlet's Speech to the Players. I call it Shakespeare's Advice for Actors. Hamlet didn't write the play. Shakespeare did. <clears throat> now, I believe this advice is often ignored in favor of making things fake. Even with Shakespeare, and especially with Shakespeare, I don't think things have to be fake. He tells you to make believe. He tells you to make it real. So, for whoever doesn't know the basic story of Hamlet, Hamlet has a dream where his father comes to him and tells him that his uncle, the father's brother, and the father is the king, the uncle has killed the king to steal the kingdom and... Hamlet's mother, who is the queen. Now, Hamlet wants to put on a play of this scenario to gauge the reaction of his uncle. Obviously, this has to look real to get a real reaction from the uncle. The players have to be playing make-believe. There can be no make-fake. So Hamlet gives a speech to the players, which, as I said, I believe is Shakespeare's speech Shakespeare's advice for actors. Now, <clears throat> nobody's going to understand every word. I didn't understand most of them. I had to look up most of them. But a lot of people are brighter than me. So I believe if I make believe while I'm telling you, 
Most people will understand. Speak to speech, I pray you as I pronounce it to you. Drippingly on the tongue. But if you just mouth it, as many of your players do, I would as leave the town crier spoke my lines. And nor do not saw your hand in the air thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent, tempest, and as I may say, whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Oh, it offends me to the soul to see a robustious periwig painted fellow tear a passion to tatters, to very rags, to split the ears of the groundlings, who for the most part are capable of nothing but inexplicable dumb shows and noise. Pray you avoid it. I'll be not too tame neither, just suit the action to the word and the word to the action with this special observance, that you o'erstep not the boundaries of nature, whose very essence both at the first and now, was and is to hold a mirror up to nature, to show virtue her feature, scorn his image, and the very age and body of the time his true form and pressure. Now, this done poorly or come t -t 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 tardy off, while it might make the unskillful laugh, it cannot but make the judicious grieve. The very censure of which must, in your allowance, o'erweigh a whole theater of others. And let your clowns speak no more than is set down for them. For there be of them that will laugh to set upon some barren spectators to laugh, while in the meantime, some important measure of the play be then to be considered. That's villainous. And it shows a most pitiful ambition. in the fool that uses it. Go make you ready. <laughs>